everybody, James Jager with Tactical Response. Please introduce yourself. My name is John. <laughs> Just John? Yeah, man, John. All my right. friends call me John. You guys be my friends. John. All right, so we're going to explore just a myriad of things you're wrong about. I've been talking to your staff out there. Apparently, you're wrong about a uh, lot. You know what? Friends oh, call oh, me John. You can call me Mr. Lovell. Uh, Mr. Lovell? Mr. Lovell. Your, your staff and you're a jerk. pointed out a lot of other things you're wrong about. There's basically a mutiny going on out there. I don't know if, you, if you've checked this. but uh, yeah. So I have, I, have, I have a list of 50 things that you're wrong about, and I'm going to give you a chance to – Try to defend your positions, but am I right about anything? Fifty no, is a lot of no. okay, fantastic. All right, okay. great. Um, so why are, why do you teach people to stop when they're shooting on the move? You tell them to move and then shoot instead of shooting while they move. I don't tell them to stop. It's Met TC Mission Enemy Time Terrain, so it, it has to do with reading a battlefield. All things remaining equal, it is better to, when you're shooting, be really good at shooting so you're fast and accurate, or when you're moving, move like a thunderbolt so as to limit your exposure to the target. So it's not that you shouldn't shoot and move. Sometimes you just got to shoot and move, so shoot and move. Wish I had a gong, like, bang, like you run out of time. Well, that was a great answer, but that's good <laughs> of like, man... When you're generally when you're shooting and moving, you are easy to shoot and you're not doing a good job as you could have been shooting. So just, there's a time for it, though. And I do shoot and move. So some of these questions came about because students misunderstand sometimes the things we're teaching. That's our fault as teachers. Um, but uh, what uh, I had tried to explain to my students is the difference between a skill and a tactic. Yeah. So when I teach shooting on the move. I'm teaching you a skill. Right not a tactic right you you put that skill into the correct tactical scenario when it's appropriate right so and my answer there was a tactical thing i'm like no there's a skill and there's the tactic generally speaking it's better to shoot when you're shooting be shooting when you're moving be moving <laughs> um so um people think we teach trigger manipulation differently i think i think they people think that we want the students to do it differently we actually teach it differently and so people think that we're real far apart on it we teach people what trigger reset is for one series of drills bang let it out till it clicks and a lot of the students they used to nobody knew what trigger reset was right now some of them know but then they go oh that's what it is and so Oftentimes, my fault, they mistakenly think that's how I want them to manipulate the trigger every single time they touch it. Yeah. What do you teach? So if you want to pin your trigger to the rear, that's fine if you're not really that concerned about fast and accurate follow-up shots. So if you're taking out a deer or you're sniping somebody from the crow's nest, a hundred, you know, whatever, you can pin that trigger to the rear and it helps you minimize the chance of jacking up a shot with or follow through. And so there's a time to pin the trigger. And fast, accurate follow-up shots, what I don't want you to do is while the sights are lifting and recovering, you're just chilling with your trigger locked to the rear, and then you get sights back on, and you're like, oh yeah, the trigger, and then you go out, in. <laughs> and it's just a massive, colossal waste of time. Whereas when you shoot, as soon as you shoot, you use that recovery time to go ahead and let your trigger out, and then come back to the pre-travel point, so that by the time your sights are settled, now I have a tenth of an inch pull, and you can do it reflexively pretty darn quickly so that's how i like people to shoot what i want is their finger to come forward past the click but not off the trigger yep me too <laughs> same thing don't don't let your finger come all the way off the trigger come a little bit past the click and then come back to it and everybody thinks that we're wildly different on what we want to happen i think we're just different on how we teach it yeah but but people think that like i teach something different than you i want their finger to come forward Past the click, mm -hmm. but not off the trigger. Yep, that's what I teach. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. you're wrong. Um, why do you mistakenly tell people to put a red dot on their pistol? Red dots are awesome, man. All the cool kids are doing it. They are. They are. I find that for concealed carry, that they offer absolutely no advantage over uh, side, regular sights. Okay. I think that's stupid. Please tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, well, maybe for the very first shot, that may be true. But especially if I get some type of reactionary uh, 
gap, if I have spread out for a, a few feet or I'm doing some kind of room clearing thing, if you ever get in a gunfight, it'll be in and around structures. The first couple of shots are kind of like, ah, and doing one of those uh, kind fair, of things. But, yeah. uh, or say I'm at church and some dude is 50 you know, feet away or, or more across a large auditorium. And I want to guarantee the headshot. I can, I'm better at that with a, a little red dot or I'm in a low light environment or I'm using night vision. It's just better, better, better. And now I can threat focus. So, uh, and so I like that. I'm really good with a red dot. I've been using it for a long time. And, uh, so people can shoot more good. accurately with the red dot. And so if you had somebody, I've done Sometimes. this, I've had this people, you have them slow fire, no pressure. They shoot the red dot, nice little group put them under pressure, that group flies away. I will take that pressure test. Okay, you. Yeah, thank you. Like I say, then people should- Don't say I'm wrong. I, in the whole you second, can say they're wrong, we're, we're they teaching, wrong. We're teaching people. So I tell people not to carry a revolver. They go, tell that to Jerry Mikulik. And I say, you're not Jerry Mikulik. That's good. But my students, I will demonstrate in Pistol too, where we put them under a bunch of stress and the red dot people are usually doing better. Uh, I, I think I, it has to do with stress inoculation more than it has to do with the tool itself. We do a lot of that, and, and I find that no, the— you don't. Sure. We nope. Do. False. Black bear. <laughs> we stuck do on a, that. We, we do a lot. We buy more <laughs> I, I We buy more force on force rounds than anybody east of the Mississippi. That may be true, but I'm still going to uh, agree to disagree, and I'm right. I'm sorry you're wrong again. You're a jerk. <laughs> So I, I, I think red dots have their place on a pistol. I, they're, they're great with night vision and on stuff top. like that. Okay. <laughs> but not for concealed carry. Fantastic. I'm going to do what I want because America. Uh, I, didn't tell you, I didn't tell you not to. You, he's trying to limit my freedom. He's basically anti-Second Amendment. So what modifications should be made to an EDC pistol? I, If you get the right gun, you don't really have to do anything to it. If you really want to do something, I think sights are probably a good thing yeah, for some guns. I don't think you really need any real modifications. Agreed. Uh, um, the best accessory you can get is training. And so you might get a set of sights, and that helps one gun. Oh, and you absolutely need a high-quality custom-fit holster. And you, when you, you got to have that. If that's an accessory, and, then that and, for and, sure. And when you get training, it is an accessory for all of your guns. That's great. Yep. I agree. Yeah, okay. That's fantastic. Um, let's see. Um, why are you wrong about telling people to hit the slide stop instead of running the slide? Ugh, you log this under arguments I don't give a flying crap about. Uh, but I'm always going to be faster than you, and it's always going to work. Uh, no. You see, if we understand the science of it, observe, orient, decide, act. If you already know what you're going to do, pushing that lever might be faster. Oh, but, it takes you, but, but it takes you longer to decide what you're going to do than the actual act of it. So if you have no decision to make, I always rack the slide, you streamline that decision-making process. And overall, if you, not one particular incident, but your weapon handling overall is faster with just the one option. Uh, I understand that, but I'm carrying the gun I'm carrying, and I don't think about the reload at all. It just happens. I'll do a, a stress fire, course of fire, and I'll do a reload, and I won't even remember it. And it happens fast, and it's working every single time. Okay. So, yeah. I'm sorry I, you're I wrong. Just, I, I see your argument, and I'm, I don't think I'm, it I'm, actually I'm, applies. I, and then oh, I know to, it applies. It argument, for sure applies. And sometimes I do rack. So, like, for instance, if it's a, a tiny gun, a subcompact gun, you just can't hit that button and come over the top, and I'm good at coming over the top too so i can do that but you have and to, then the battlefield pickup thing is like what if it's a battlefield pickup i'm like have you also found a reload and staged it that this is even a thing like no i no just no he's just gone to the ridiculous James is wrong. he's gone to the ridiculous to to make his point friendship is canceled uh we were never friends um it's hurtful okay so since you began teaching yeah. Has there been anything that you changed? Like, ah, oh, there's a better way to do that. Is there anything like that jumps out at you? Like, because I I know you've only been teaching for about six months, so maybe maybe there's not been six time. and a half months. Maybe there hasn't been time. Sure. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm I'm definitely learning and growing. I'm on a process, so yeah, absolutely. Okay, dot and magnifier versus uh, LPVO. 
depends on your context. And, and it also depends for me, I'm getting older and my eyes just suck. My long distance vision sucks. And so for me, it's less about shooting someone and it's more has to do with observing. Like, what is that? that that's a person. That's a person with a gun. Oh, it's it's a good guy. You know, like I, I need to be able to see what in the world's going on. Well, and they both have if, magnification. Right, I know, but um, that's just kind of like the base there. Uh, if I am out in the woods, kind of like recon kind of thing uh, of wide open spaces, I want an LPVO. If I'm more in and around structures and stuff, I want that red dot and I want the ma uh, magnifier out of the way so that if I need it, I can flip it up. Add on question, uh, and I think you just answered it. What changes if you have nods on? Uh, you can see in the dark. No, no, for the, your optic choice. What do you, I was, don't, that was a, let's revel in that. That was a great answer. Um, night vision is, optic choice, night I vision want, is the only, night vision is the yeah. only superpower you can buy. I want a red dot. Yeah, red dot for night vision. And I want my un, how, high rise unity mount. Give them uh, your best tip on how to pick a good trainer. Like if they can't travel to one of your classes. WarriorPoetSociety.us. That's good. No, I, I'm looking for a, a few of uh, one is. Like it should be a Delta Force guy or should it be a SEAL or no, should it so be No, so if it's specifically fighting, it, they should have been in fights. That's a really important piece. Uh, if, if it's just, hey, I want fast and accurate, then it could be a competitor. If it's tracking people, then they've tracked people. You know, if, like you don't want a fat personal trainer in the same way. I want some experiential there. I want somebody who is uh, somebody I just generally like and is teachable and they can, they're good communicators. That's a good thing. Uh, I think somebody who can demonstrate with great proficiency is another good thing. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's some good pieces right there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, you're, you're wrong, I'm sure. Um, why are you wrong about people using silencers for home defense? Oh, I knew you would ask this. I <laughs> did a video on this, and no one really understood. And it was kind of like a, I threw it in there of like, yeah, for home defense, I'll kind of take this off. And it was just my personal thing, and I was just letting you all in on it. And the Internet freaked out. And so then I made a clarifying video. And still, it's like people are so shooter-driven and not like, the, the, yeah. the game of, tactics. Hook, of like tactics. tactics or gaining advantage over an adversary in the areas of timing, positioning, and psychology. And typically, if people even press into tactics a little, they maximize position and timing, but they never really think about psychology. And I think of like, all right, if somebody breaches my structure, uh, the first dude, uh, I think, given all my early warning stuff, if he is able to get in my house, I'm like, way to go. My Belgian's probably gnawing on him. And I'm going to wax that guy, and he has no idea. He never he never had a chance. But now I'm wondering, are there other people around the house? And I want to send a loud and scary message, do not enter or you will die. And a loud gun does that far better than a quiet gun. Plus, I've got my alarm going off, and if I have a silenced gun, and the video I had, uh, that was a 300 blackout, which... Mm -hmm an alarm going off, a dog barking, and this guy screaming while he dies, and a si movie quiet 300 black. You're not going to hear that gun. <laughs> I want him to hear the gun. And those would be like, you'll screw up your hearing. I'm like, I'm in a fight for my life. Screw my hearing. I've also been in gunfights inside rooms, real gunfights, where I had a loud 556. Five, I just shot someone with a saw, uh, point blank. I had other people shooting, and I was actually communicating just fine. In training, your auditory exclusion shuts all that off. I was able to communicate fine. In training, it hurts real bad and you can't hear a thing and you're going to get tinnitus. But I hear just fine. <laughs> Wrong again. Huh? <laughs> you knew that was coming. Everyone knew that was coming. Anyway, I don't care what you do. I do me and whatever you want. Everyone hates that because I think it's like the precious, the can. I got my silencer. And the audacity to have the special thing. And not, not use, use it. it for yeah, everything. I'm using everything. Everyone freaks out of like, hey, nods are cool. I got If night somebody vision. breaks into my house in the daytime, I'm still wearing my nods. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm like, dude, you use nods in the wrong area there. It'll get you killed. It'll get you killed. And so people don't understand that. So, why do you why do you teach people to have a loose grip? I don't teach loose grips. I'm hey, I'm just reporting the news. I don't teach loose grips. Grip your guns. <laughs> yeah, grip your, you're going to want to <laughs> grip your guns. Don't grip loose. I tell people to squeeze it really hard because I think they're going to be. Okay, that's great. I like that. That's fine. What do you tell people? I say this one right here, uh, especially when they're initially learning, 
I don't want you to dork up this. Yeah, and right. I'm dealing with the flinch yeah, yeah, response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the tighter they grip this yeah. when they're learning, the more that flinch is. And I'm really trying to get them to not anticipate the shot. So I say, hey, this, go ahead and give me a nice firm handshake, good firm handshake. And this one, you can go as crazy as you want. But it's really more about uh, the uh, pressures and the, the torque than it is the muscles. And so that's what I'm, I'm getting at. No, grip your guns tight, guys. Wrong again. Um, Somebody wanted your advice for raising kids, but after hanging out with your kids, my kids are awesome. The last couple of days, false. Nobody in your house is well behaved. My kids are awesome. <laughs> my kids are awesome. <laughs> no, they're great. Do you have a point of parenting advice? Just a like, always do this, never do that. You got something? Yeah, try to raise them to love Jesus. Everything will work out pretty well. Uh, hopefully, uh, let's see. Um, we, uh, our little boys are full of life. We have uh, discipline for them, obviously, what's expected. Uh, Jordan Peterson says, never let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Uh, and I thought that, well, I'm like, that nah. sounds awful. Who would ever do that? But when you're honest, it's kind of like, no, shut that down early. Uh, you should be telling them one time to do something. And if they don't obey, well, then now there's a discipline. Yeah. Thing, and it's just called hard math. Like yeah. that. I'm like, all right, well, then... Now you're going to bed without this, you know, you want you to eat your food of like, that's the only food you have time on the clock. You're not going to eat it. Fantastic to bed without dinner. And then they're starving. And guess what? They're going to eat that dinner for breakfast tomorrow. And I love them <laughs> and they know I love them and I'm affectionate and I'm wrestling with them and tickle fights and we read every night. And so my boys know I love them, but they, they really need to understand Consequ consequences. consequences. You can't let them terrorize. Yep, yep. And so that's good. Um, why do you promote the use of airsoft for training? I don't really. Pro so airsoft can be a good tool uh, right out of the gate. Get some airsoft and just start messing around with some pro, and you can immediately get some benefit there. But then probably after about an hour, it's denigrated into a bunch of kids running around playing airsoft. Playing airsoft. <laughs> and then all the training value is gone. Yeah. And now it starts to give you training scars. And so airsoft can be a good tool, but you need to really couple it with somebody who can actually call bull crap on that. All right, bring it in, guys. Absolutely not. And then really do uh, context. So I don't care whether it's a real force on force round, like, you know, you're using one and I'm using mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. or people are using UTM or Sims or whatever they're using. I prefer that mm -hmm. because they're a more hardy, yep. like little airsoft seals fail and stuff. And, uh, and the reloads aren't real. Right. Not, not, not at all. And so you can use airsoft. I've got airsoft guns. I've like, we've used those in classes. I'm not anti airsoft. Airsofts can be okay. It's really more about somebody making it a, a, a realistic and beneficial training environment. So right out of the gate, it'll benefit you. And after about an hour of playing airsoft, you're going to do all kinds of stuff that a good trainer will be like, whoa, stop, pause. I know this helps you win airsoft and you feel like you're doing great, but no way they would do that. And no way you would do that. I'm calling horse crap. Let's change the scenario. All right, bring it in guys. And, and now I can actually make a scenario mm. based on uh, this, but I don't know why, but you're wrong. Okay. Okay. Uh, so developing curriculum, what, uh, like, how do you think that your experiences as a ranger help or hurt training a stateside civilians? Easy because, uh, a fight, you know, has all the, the skills and then the tactics and the criminal mindset, mindset of the terrorist m mindset. A lot of times there's just such easy commonalities. I can't help but play tactician and I know what the end result should be. And so curriculum, it's always, I start with what I want them to do. I want you to be hard to kill and good at stopping threats. And so to be able to end at that goal, now I know where they are. And now all I have to do is reverse engineer in steps where I'm, I'm lathering in fighter mindset. I'm teaching them about tactics and you're not training to fight each other or me. You're training to fight a bad guy who is pretty predictable when you start figuring out how they play checkers. Right, and it's checkers, not chess, because their moves, their timing, their targets, it's all so boringly predictable, but the public has largely just has never really thought about it. You think like you. You don't think like a bad guy. If you thought like a bad guy, you'd be a bad guy. So uh, so, so, so anyway. book of book of five rings, checkers, art of war, chess. Yes. Yes. And and the difference there is uh, Musashi was being more of a tactician, yeah, 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 but he wasn't yeah. a strategist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Strategy tactics, skill. 
and and so it's it's kind of like that like a, a lens zooming in and all are important you could be the best fighters with the best tactics in a war and you get wax because you have no strategy uh and that can be for life for combat or, or war and then you could be the best skill but the tacticians are going to clean your clock they're going to crush you uh so anyway all three are really important and you just got to have them all you got to have it all uh, why should it should it should an EDC pistol have a light? Um, it could be helpful in some stuff. The light on the pistol is really helpful if you're already under fire exchanging rounds, and then if you use that white light wrong, uh, you're pro you may tactically deserve to die for that error, and a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, and then you can also do a handheld light. If I had to choose between the handheld light or the light on a gun i choose the handheld you got light. to choose a handheld because uh, but that's because i know what to do with this and when to come on it's more of a sniper shot than people understand regarding on exactly when it comes on how long it comes on and uh all that stuff so so there's low light skill and then there's low light tactics well, and i'm thinking about the main thing i tell people is you still have to carry a pocket flashlight because you can't point your gun at every bump you hear i have heard of a cop directing traffic with a i heard i've light. heard that i think that's urban it's legend. not uh -uh. i nope, think that's nope. urban legend. i know the area it happened in i heard that it was too. me no <laughs> <laughs> it was me <laughs> i know what happened for sure um so you told me so yeah every time somebody shows up carrying their gun in the four, four o'clock position i know they're one of your guys what no I, yeah you did my you guys... told me that you told me that oh I was every time just... a guy shows up for class and carrying their gun at four o'clock that's not it's... true you told me that i say a lot of stuff to you and most of it's just to annoy you no. <laughs> so uh, guys carrying all positions i don't really care yeah i don't either but uh, but why are you wrong about that that i don't care how you <laughs> hey carry a gun it needs to be comfortable and accessible it doesn't need to be comfortable it does need to be comfortable I disagree. absolutely I disagree then you are wrong if it's not comfortable ultimately you'll stop carrying i disagree needs to find toughen the highest up. level of toughen comfort. up right. see when they say the highest level of comfort then guys do weird stuff well go oh, it's not comfortable if i carry well, it's balance in the holster other stuff yeah balance from other stuff. they don't so, want to balance the other stuff they just want it to be comfortable got it they're, they're, I'm just being real on folks uh -huh. stop caring uh, after they've been uncomfortable long enough. Um, what influenced you to be a better teacher, like or a teacher in general? What 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 made you go? I should start telling other people this stuff. Well, thank you for um, insinuating I'm a good teacher. Thanks. That was Appreciate a question that. submitted by somebody that doesn't know you. I like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> not as much this guy not as much this guy uh so um hmm i, I have kind of like this thing that makes me tick and i want to communicate for life change which means i really love where i feel the best is when i'm actually helping people grow and so i actually don't care exactly what i'm teaching it's just kind of like i'm watching light bulbs come on and people get better and that's a big deal to me i'm actually very bored with the gun stuff guns are not interesting to me anymore i'm like i do the guns and oh i'm that's probably saying too far how about i like guns i don't love guns you know it's not like <laughs> I, I get a new gun and i'm like petting it i'm kind of like oh that's a cool gun we'll review it later and, and then i'll go shoot it but it's really it's a tool that i like but i don't love it i've like i'd rather be talking about like uh you know a uh, theology or teaching some philosophical axiom that i think is really going to help and change us i like that stuff better yeah i tell people all the time when they come to fighting pistol that the thousand rounds was just to get you here to trick you into listening to my lecture that's so funny that's so funny <laughs> hey ideas are more powerful they're more important too um tell me about your nds i have zero nds i have two okay don't so do those when i was 12 with a 22 rifle through the roof all right. And when I was like 19, 22 pistol through the floor. So I just, I don't shoot 22s anymore, gotcha. obviously. Yeah, it's the 22 is what it is. So. Um, yeah, if you ever would ND in Ranger Battalion, it's an immediate, you're immediately fired. Doesn't matter who you are or what your resume is or how important you are. Literally, it's up, up, ND, pack your bags, go. That's it. And we carried, you know, rounds hot. If you follow the universal firearm safety rules, you cannot ND. I tell people all the time, pressing the trigger is not part of the unloading process. It's part of the shooting process. All right. <laughs> shooting is unloading, but semantical <laughs> difference. He's right. He's wrong. I'm right. 
Um, press checks are stupid. Okay. I just want to say that. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, <laughs> I can't good even, chat. I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> Uh, I'm just proud you were able to write. So my people asked, how big of an impact did my quote unquote, their words, introduction help you on your way through this? Massive, massive. You were the one that got me onto YouTube in the first place uh, and really encouraged me in that time where I might have just not even done it if it wasn't you. So I am on YouTube. I've made a lot of mistakes. I look back on that one. <laughs> you jerk. Uh, yeah, extremely. And even after that, continued to answer some of my questions and really help me kind of to find out uh, some things that I wanted to. Uh, yeah. There's so huge influence. So do you look for people to help in the same way? Uh, yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Absolutely. OK. I thought we were going to make a friendly video, but I'm this on the is, defense. Th this is as friendly I as feel, it gets. I feel pretty attacked This here. is as friendly as it gets. <laughs> um, why did your handwriting suck when you signed the bunks in the team room? They said you had horrible handwriting. That awesome handwriting. Agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were really stretching for us. It was good. It was good handwriting. It was... A question with that. That's good. I, I disagree. Uh, so your overall thoughts on being a content creator, like I was just talking to one of your fellows and they said, yeah, you know, we got to constantly find good, good right. content. So what is it like being a content creator? You went from being a ranger and all that stuff. Now this is what you do. Boom. What's up? Yeah, I, I, I want to, sometimes it's just entertainment and it's fun and it and sometimes it's a grind. It's like, we got to get a video out because that's what we do. That's that's our work and that's what pays the bills of all of our staff around here and, you know, funds our store. Anyway, so there's that piece. But usually uh, I want to attach something of value and I'm, I'm giving something and making the world a better place. And so that's a big deal. And I try. Uh, when I do videos to forget about all the lights and sound and just look through the camera lens and, and imagine I'm speaking directly to you and helping you. And that's what pumps me up. Hmm. So whatever. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's like one time um, when I was doing a lot of YouTube and wasn't teaching much, one of my guys jokingly said, hey, you're going to teach anymore? I said, well, I taught 50 million people this month. Yeah. <laughs> It's good. It's good. <laughs> um, so, um, so uh, it's well known that part of our draw st stroke in fighting pistol is to move off the line of attack. And uh, you, I don't think you move off the line at all. And so, uh, I think you take a step. Yeah. Right. Side step. Yeah. But you don't move off the X. So why don't you teach people to move? I do teach them to move. I don't teach them to step though. Unless it's stepping behind a piece of cover well, or in, in front of a non-combatant that since, you would like since, to use as a meat shield. Since you've, never a joke. since you've never taken a class from me, John, what you don't understand is that's the first push of a row of dominoes. I get it, but whenever and I... I oh, I'll let you talk. And if you're a shot timer, shooty, fasty guy, if you do the sidestep, do five draw and shoot and do five sidestep draw and shoot. The sidestep will be faster. It'll be a faster time. Disagree. Do it. I've, I've done it. I am a quick draw kind of guy. It's faster. Nope. Okay. I'm pretty You're fast draw, and I guarantee you I can draw faster and shoot stationary than I can with a step. But that's besides the point. I don't think you're fooling anybody. Uh, with a step, if a step is a placeholder for a lot more movement and it's kind of like, go, 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 go. If that's what the step is a placeholder for, I like that argument a lot. I can get he's behind just, that. He, like I said, um, he's never taken a class from me. It's fair enough. That That's actually fair enough. But I think we're saying the same thing. If your step is a placeholder for step, step, steps, 
And if that's true, then I like that philosophy. I don't know if the execution is actually going to play out. That's the question of what you're, oh, no, I'm stepping as a how placeholder, much, how but much, then they only step. How much can I do with a line full of people? You can't. I can do a sidestep, and it's the yep. first push of a row of dominoes. Do you think they continue training on their own and actually if you would take a, if you would take a steps? class from me but i'm asking you what you would see what class. happens in the rest of the class i garrett i recommend your classes because i think they're awesome and uh step away man if it's a placeholder for more movement but i don't want people to think that you when you take a step that does something extraordinary that doesn't save your life of like you're on the x you're it done does. bro it, it does but okay, uh, okay. so it's you're, like, you're wrong. and I disappear. You're wrong like again. <laughs> you're wrong again. That's right, okay. That's right. okay. It's fine. Fair enough. It's fine. Um, I respect I, your beard. <laughs> <laughs> so we both used and recommend different products. Sure. And and often, I don't know about you, I get called a shill. If I, if I say I like this product and that person doesn't like it, they call me a shill. Yeah. How do you decide what passes muster? How do you decide, okay, this is good enough that I'm gonna share this with the people I care about. It all comes down to integrity. Do you trust me or do you not trust me? Everyone in the world, their opinion is for sale. That's what a job is called. Your opinion, you know, like a lot of yep. your opinion, that, that's that's fine, that's, that's okay. That's actually capitalism and marketing. But your good opinion never should be for sale. Someone shouldn't be able to say, I'll pay you this if you'll compromise and say something that's not true. That's not, there's, that's not something that can be bought. And you either believe me or you don't. And so it's kind of like it all basically comes down to that. If I see a product that's good, I'll say, all right, uh, I like this, I'll use it. And so I recommend it. Or I'll say, you know what, I like it. Uh, however, on my context, I'm not gonna use that, but someone else say, uh, in a different context, that's a good answer for them. Now I'll recommend that as well. And that's basically all I do. And if you say, well, you're a shill, meaning I am trading my integrity for a nominal fee of a little <laughs> bit of money, screw you, man. You suck. You don't know me, screw you. That's a super jacked up disrespectful thing to yeah, say. Yeah, absolutely. That's really mean spirit. And you don't know me. And I'm not going to trade my integrity for a nominal fee. If I tell you I think it's good, it's because I think it's good. It's, and maybe in time I'll find out, well, actually, I was wrong. That thing sucked. <laughs> but it was an accident. It was I, in, yeah, I'm yeah, operating yeah, in yeah. good faith. And so uh, you could be a shill if you're dishonest. And you're not a shill if you're honest. Here's what I tell people. I say, if you want to find out if I'm a sellout or a shill, go look at the last video I made. Because if I got paid so much money... That I went, yeah, I'll lie this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Just go look at the last gotcha, one. Oh, yeah, always well, buy this. I, I don't get this from the Second Amendment community because we're all constitutionalists and we're Second Amendment. But the moment someone can f make a dollar doing any marketing endeavor, it's like they're pro-constitutional and anti-capitalism. It's like we're, we love the Second Amendment, but we're, we're kind of Marxist. It just is amazing to me, the cognitive dissonance there. Here's what's funny. I have sold more Glock 19s than have ever been made. Yep. I've never gotten a no. penny from Glock. Never gotten a penny from Glock. Yeah. I tell people to buy them all the time. Actually. That's not from Glock. That's from you. Nope. Glock asked me to give you this. This is for services rendered. rendered. <laughs> There you go, big boy. You earned it. That is not the first time somebody shoved a dollar in a piece of my clothing. That's, I believe you and I hate it. <laughs> what was his name? Gunther. Okay. All right. John. Okay. It's really going downhill fast. Right. I'm sorry. Um, you did a great job in my videos, and I'm just no, I'm not good. doing well. No, this I'm is sorry. Good. Here's what everybody thinks. They think that when 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 we hang out, like no, rack the slide. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, you know. <laughs> we don't care. We don't care. I wasn't gonna hurt your injury there. Yeah, I, I was. I was aware open, of it. I sliced open my thumb there. I got eight stitches, and I just took him out. Uh, and that's what he was. Uh, hold on, I'll be all right. <laughs> He's not strong enough to rip it back open. What are you currently learning about? Like, do you have something right now that you're like, hmm, I'd like to know more about that? Anything. 
like in in your in your world so it's january so it's a little bit of a restructuring uh and so some stuff in the business world i really want to be a better leader and i really understand my shortcomings and so i'm trying to grow uh into that uh revisiting some parenting and homeschooling stuff so i'm doing that i'm always in my bible so i'm always learning and growing there which is cool and uh, yeah, I just jump around in different books and I'm always learning kind of in my job about a new piece of gear or equipment or something like that. So always learning, trying to. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, plans to attend any uh, training in 2021? Like take a class on anything, like video editing, social marketing, shooting, anything? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I wanna do some more up close gun knife, kind of more gun combative gun yeah. foo. I want to go, you know, physical and I want to start getting back into uh, martial arts, jujitsu stuff. Okay. And so I've been rusty, yeah. uh, like I had a yeah. good base and all that stuff and I've just gotten away from it. I got to be able to uh, get back into that more. And you've uh, trained with and done some videos with Craig Douglas. Yeah, absolutely. And, and ECQC, Shiv Works, we recommend it. We've recommended that guy forever. Yep, yep. His full class is on our network. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so WPSN. We'll go app. ahead and talk about that real quick. Yeah, go to the App Store and get our Warrior Poet Network. Here's the deal: is left the left has a complete monopoly on media, on Hollywood, on all of our entertainment stuff, and because politics and everything else is downstream of culture, there's a culture war. And so what we're doing is kind of like, man, given the landscape, and this is why you're doing Liberty TV as well. This is our version. This is, we have our full classes and like red cameras and so, so super high quality for us, um, way more than what we're doing on our YouTube Let, let, let me say this. I saw some of the first stuff I've seen on his network. It looks Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And we have entertaining shows, our War Poet show, which is what you saw yeah, yeah. with a helicopter no, great. coming down and getting us in the sweat. Anyway, super fun. And we've got uh, Unbreakable Mind with Tony Simonot, Real World Tactical. And he's doing, uh, pulling some contestants through just utter hell. And then 100 Deadly Skills Combat Edition, uh, visiting all these personalities, showing you like these Delta operators or SEALs or whatever, showing you their go to moves. And we're adding more and more shows all the time. Ryan Mitchler's Order of Man. Uh, anyway, and we're just, but we need help. We're still trying to grow, and it's about uh, taking the despotic left who has a monopoly on all this stuff and is force-feeding us their values and us saying, horse crap, uh, there's a bunch of people out there, and so we're taking on the Goliath there. And we're making strides, but we still need help. We need people to get behind what we're doing. It's entertaining shows. It's good, helpful training. It is a good, worthy endeavor, and... It looks really good. It's a good value. Yeah, it's it's um, very. It looks super good. Thanks, man. Thanks. It's okay. like TV shows. No, sorry. Yeah. Thanks. No, no, no. Um, so somebody comes and takes a class from you or me, okay. and they go home. And their friends like you should just teach us that thing you learned there. What do you think? Do you think that people that take classes from us should go and teach their friends? Yes, please, for the love of God, yes. Uh, and you can caveat it all. First off is definitely mirror our safety systems. Uh, you want to be like, hey, I'm hanging out with my bro. So there's a gun and you don't want to be real strict. I'm like, nope, universal yeah. safeties. You conduct it, you handle weapon man manipulations, loading, unloading, tell them how to grasp it and do it and lord over them and do that so they have a good safe experience and then they have to earn the right to do this. And it'll actually be a good experience as they realize, ah, this is about systems. And so you have to copy us in that way. Uh, but uh, I think it's good. A lot of people are just never going to come to us, and you're the only instructor that they're ever going to see. And I want the gun community in as large to get better. And, yeah, you wouldn't be as good at, as James at teaching it, but maybe you're the stepping stone that helps them one day get to James. And that's if, a good thing. If all you teach them is safety, everybody wins. Yeah, that's but, great. But I, in my class, like near the end, I'll say, hey, raise your hand if you're a firearms instructor. And one or two guys raise their hand. I go, no, everybody raise your hand. Because now you know more than everybody around the water cooler at work, yep. you know, at church, or at whatever. You know, you are an instructor now. That's great. Yep. That's cool. Um, so um, thoughts on bugging out or bugging in or anything you have any thoughts about any of that? Yeah, kind of you stuff? bug out only if you absolutely positively cannot bug in. Uh, and bugging in has to do with 
Yeah. Do you have? Are you have able to have long-term sustainability and security at that location? Uh, um, and so if you're bugging out to a, a, another place where you can gain that, of security is the number one prep uh, and community, and then the food, water, shelter, all that stuff. If you don't have security, you're just stockpiling for someone else that's going to one day take it. So, Do you know what you call somebody that bugs out with no location to go to? A homeless man. A refugee. A refugee. A homeless works. A homeless, homeless works. works. <laughs> you just get a shopping cart, and I'm not making it. Yeah, yeah. Just people haven't really thought it through. And if you're going to spend money and time preparing, you might as well give the intellectual problem the respect of thinking well about it. And so I would rather not bug out. I want to build a property yeah. that I can bug that I can bug in at, and that may be 30 minutes away. That's your bug in location. So you're not like bugging out to Kansas and just hoping you'll stumble upon grass that's greener. That's not a plan. That's that's just a vain hope. Uh, so uh, you're, you're wrong about everything. So I'll just, say, I'll just say that. And uh, so uh, let's talk about John for a minute. A lot, you know, you're you're you're. A husband, a father, a Christian, a business owner, an employer, you know, you're a lot of things. Uh, how do you find, not only time, but how do you find peace? Like, you know, it's busy. It's this life we live is, yeah. is crazy. What do you do? How do you find balance, peace? Like, Balance is my number one word, but there's a, a place in Scripture, it, it happens five times in the New Testament. I know some of y'all are like, no, right, no, please, no, please, please, and, please, 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 please. But please. It's still, you asked, and this is, this is what makes me tick. It's the foundation of everything I am. But it says, uh, be sure to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. And I've stewed on that for years. Live a life worthy of the calling you've received. I think it's Colossians 1. Uh, so I, I've come up and basically decided that verse is really speaking about balance. It's not just killing it at business, just to have your marriage fall apart, your kids hate you, and uh, everyone, you know, thinks you're a jerk and you're not being good. That's not success. That's a, a horrible failure of a man. You're a multi-million dollar pitiful excuse, a failure of a person. And so I want balance. I'd rather have less but have that peace. And so I want to be well balanced all across the areas. And that's what success of a man is. It's not all warrior or all poet. It's, it's right. both. It's that balance. And that's good. Uh, so for me, um, I'm trying to whittle down just the most important stuff and make sure I maximize that. I don't want to be too heavy in any way. Right. So if I am too heavy at home. I'm always there. I'm the best dad in the world, but I can barely pay the bills and that sucks. That, that That's not super great. Or, uh, you know, maybe I'm really good at home and at work, but I'm not doing anything for my fellow man. And then, you know, like I'm not being generous in the community, making the world a better place. That's a big thing that I'm on a big tirade on. I was more generous in 2020 than I've ever been before. I'm giving away. I think I was too. I'm yeah. giving away a lot of money to help people. And I'm not touting that. I'm just saying these are my personal goals of of balance, making the world a better place, and loving people. And so that helps me keep it so that money doesn't rule me. Is the best thing you can do to make sure you don't become super selfish is to be generous. You're generous. You're a generous guy. From day one when I met you, you were generous to me. Uh, and I get stories everywhere. So uh, anyway, I, I want to be very generous. And so balance is real important. And I make sure I don't try to be doing everything. I, you you got to say no to a great amount so you can say yes to just the most important stuff. Uh, one thing that's helped me around here is I've got a staff of really uh, good folks around here at and, Warrior Poet and, HQ. And that guy. Thanks, Chad. You're my homeboy. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we've got a really good staff, and what I'm able to do is offload problems and stuff so I can just focus on what only I can do. Yeah, so. good stuff. Okay, so th I wanted you to have your have your say there. You know, seriously, it, and anything else you want to say, you're welcome to. Let's say, let's say they say, hmm, I've never heard of this John Lovell guy. Okay, I got the app. There's an app. What else, how else can they be a part of what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, we get stronger when you come alive more. Uh, I'm always in this fear that I'm a shadow of the man that I'm supposed to be. I'm not who I'm supposed to be yet. I'm growing in 
to whatever that man is like. You know, like I want to be that. And I, I think uh, what happens is as we come alive passionately, we're strong defenders. We're bold and courageous and all those great masculine attributes we need to continue to grow into. But we're also vulnerable and romantic and loving and kind and compassionate. That spreads. That's a really cool thing of like, I, I know people like that who are warriors and poets, lion and lamb, both same t- thing of like, holy cow, that, that's great. And the more we grow like that, I think the better the world is going to be. And so we're a grassroots movement. It's not just about like, get my app. The app's cool. It helps. It's going to help you grow. But that's not it. It's more of grassroots. It's more of less about the gadgetry and the guns and stuff. And it's more about people growing. So be better. Really ante up and get on this journey as we're all continuing to shoulder to shoulder, press forward into something greater. That's what our society is about. I want to point something out. I've given people the lead in to tell me their website hundreds of times. That's the first time somebody has not given me the lead in to their website and it was fantastic. And we have a website. No, give it now. <laughs> website, Warrior Poet Society. And, you know, and, no, I'm Dot serious. US. Like, no, yes, that was, that's good. That that's was, good. that was fantastic. Oh, well, fantastic. Good. There that you was go. good. Yay. I didn't, I didn't know I was going to get that. So a little value added. Yeah, know. value added. That's we're, the only thing. You, that's that's the only one of us. That's the only thing you better. got right. That's the only thing you got right this whole <laughs> time was that 50 things wrong one thing right <laughs> but it was a big thing that's a big thing to get right that was fantastic Thanks, um man man this is great so for my people you should already be subscribed to warrior Poet on youtube um facebook instagram uh all that if you haven't you should you really you should hit yourself in the head with a hammer um check out his app i'm going to do that asap um and uh look forward to him he's travels he trains he's got another guy that trains with him john that looks like he ate another human he, paul oh I'm, sorry i'm, oh, sorry, john. Sorry, I'm sorry, john sorry, sorry I'm paul john. i'm gonna paul. put a tag no, this, on for you he it's looks crazy. like he ate another person he, he's <laughs> yeah paul's a dangerous <laughs> animal and he's he's uh teaching classes but if you he's get really a chance, good if you get a chance to train with paul you should do that he's great uh but uh we host them they travel they do stuff mm-hmm. Uh, you should train with these guys. They have Thanks, they have a Thank piece you. of the puzzle. A I have two pieces. Piece. They have a one tiny piece. I'm they have constantly piece. getting your students. They have a corner. Yeah, you you're should be. Mine too. I'm gonna load. I'm gonna get them ready for visiting you though. I'm kind of like, who here is planning on attending a tactical response? Do it. Definitely get in the fight because I love your. I love that you major on force on force. Not a lot of people do. You gotta get all the range stuff. It's about getting you ready to do force on yeah. force. Force on force is the, Pressure that's test. the thing. And everything else, it's just here's pistol one and draw it. it. That's all just the skills, getting you ready to force on force. And so the only way to get good at fighting is to fight. That's it, period, That nothing else. And so, and you major on that. And that's awesome. That's that's real good. We do some, we don't do nearly as much anyway. Oh, but, oh we, don't, we don't do as much as we want. People won't sign up for uh, it. Awful. Three, it's sign three, up for his force on force le, class. It's le, the most le, important stuff. Less, less than 10% of our fighting pistol students take the fight. Uh, and don't be scared. Listen, everyone's going to get shot and it's kind of like a roller coaster. You're like, you're freaking out. And after you ride it, you're like, again, that's what you feel. <laughs> force women, on force. women are like, women are like, I want to get shot in the nipple. I go, I also don't want to get shot in the nipple. My nipples also bruise. Do they? Yeah. That's their, their show me. No, 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 you'll do it, you'll do it, you'll do it. You're welcome. I stopped him. You're welcome. Oh, but what I was, oh, man, what, what was I saying? Oh, I want to be like, all right, how many of y'all plan on attending a tactical response class? All right, good, good. Y'all should all attend. But when you get to James, uh, and I'll, I'll just like, I'm sending like little sp- espionage spies. Yeah, to yeah, like, yeah. He loves when you wax his head. I want you to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> just, and so with I've your got mask constantly on. With your mask on. Po- <laughs> <laughs> constantly warrior poet alumni just messing with you. And that's my new goal in life. You, you don't understand that um, is emergency alert. Yeah. You don't understand when they come to me, they're now my alumni. Oh, that's true. <laughs> John, thanks. Is there anything else? 
No, man. Oh, this was fun. Always Guys, um, we don't sit and arm wrestle when we don't agree on teaching stuff. We don't really care about m most of the stuff we disagree on. It's kind of like you, you care a lot about that. I'm like, no, I mean, I think what I think. But at the end of the like that doesn't really matter. <laughs> I, I care about the stuff that does move. Then, so if he disagreed with what I just said about force on force, I care a lot about that. You know, like, no, let that's important. Whoa. Uh, back up. And so the stuff that we agree on is the real important stuff. And that stuff, I just don't care. The coroner won't draw your chalky outline and say, rack the slide when he should have hit the button. That's not what it comes down to. I figure uh, that's the guy that failed art school. Yeah. Like, what can you do? I can draw a line around stuff. <laughs> that's, that's your job of like, oh, I wasn't good at coloring, but I could trace. <laughs> That's a good joke. That's a good joke. <laughs> Can I have my dollar back? Because this was right. to shake your moneymaker, and you didn't do it anyway. <laughs> no shaking of moneymakers. All right, guys. You want to sign off? Yeah, guys. Uh, this is James Yeager with Tactical <laughs> Response reminding you that your responsibility to prepare for the fight. Be ready for the fight. Blah, blah, blah. Never ends. Say it. Never ends. It never ends. <laughs> That's horrible. Okay, we're done. <laughs>